Welcome everybody. This is Ryefield Models freshly re-released initial production Tiger Tank of the Abteilung 501 in Tunisia. You're watching Tank Brusher, don't forget to subscribe. I don't introduce this vehicle now to full detail, just dumping out the box, diving right into it. You're looking at a two episode build project. This episode is the construction. Next time it will be finished. Before we do so, just shortly what is different between the initial release and this one. We get a new sprue W correcting a lot of parts, a slight molded outer turret <laughs> shell, as well as 3D printed parts. And even more important, this thing is a cable now. Only one vehicle of the second company used a reinforced mandlet. The kit does not allow to build this vehicle to good accuracy. This is why we go with the initial one for the vehicle I would like to build. In this kit we get two guns. Slight molded, all perfect, only difference is a bit more texture in the newer sprue. They have both the right length, however. This was supposed to be an issue with the initial release. When assembling the turret, we have to clear a little bit a interference here. That's a leftover from RFM switching over to a slight molded outer turret. From the first release had a two-piece outer shell and that's now fixed. The overall fit so far is quite perfect. Everything slides and fits to perfect tolerance so far. For those of you who built the full interior version, there might be a gap you have to fill. I'm not sure if this gets covered over with storage or internal components. The rest of the turret assembly is pretty uneventful until we have a pretty rare choice using a 3D printed packed up muscle brake. That's an option I happily go for carefully removing the support structure first, a little bit of sanding is required after, then using CA glue to set it into place. First time we see 3D printed parts in a normal release of an armor kit. Short look at the other choices, the loader's hatch on the initial set a weld seam around it. When we choose a vent cover, unless you want to display it underwater operation, the vent cover should be open. On the commander's cupola there is a ridge around the chamfer at the top. This ridge needs to be sanded down a bit. The screw joints on the inner surface need to be bolt heads, not nuts. At first glance this seems to be fixed now against the previous release. But since I'm building the non-interior version, I automatically display all hatches closed. However, you want to check the angle the lid sits on first. It should rest at about 100 degrees. There was an issue in the first release as well. When it comes to choosing handles, I use the injection molded ones after I've compared them to the wire supplied in the upgrade solution. There's too small of a difference. What is actually the upgrade solution? That's an additional box filled with two more sheets of photo edge at the same size the one included is as well as another box of 3D printed parts and some wire I already misplaced. I'm not going to use all of the parts included, only the ones that are most challenging and where they make sense. Fitting both criteria is the storage box. This the thing scares the hell out of me. I've never managed to put something together that complex, but I can't progress if I keep dodging these though. First establishing the basic shape using a photo edge tool. I would like to solder this one. Based on my previous experience, I am pretty sure my soldering iron is not up to the task heating such a large element. That's why I fell back to CA glue instead, working out the shape section by section and using plenty of glue. This works too, as far as I can tell at least, and I got myself some Ammo by MIG debonder. That one helped as well when it comes to clean up the previous steps. All in all, the box went together somehow. Not perfect of course, but a morale boost nevertheless. The lid can be made workable if you have the skill. The detail of the lock for example is just insane. Okay, I mount this now loosely for the video only. It needs to be painted separately later on. The injection molded one is the right size as well. That's another issue they fixed with this release. So you can choose your option. Wrapping up the turret now, I did use the smoke dischargers from the upgrade solution. Nevertheless, they are the wrong part for what I am constructing here. I have to print my own till the next episode. And 
while I'm editing this video, I realized you guys actually have no idea yet of what I'm going to build here. This Tiger has the chassis number 15, making it an early October 1942 production vehicle. At this time, not even the final word about the Porsche design was spoken yet. That's why I call this one by the more accurate model designation Ausführung H1. The vehicle was part of the Abteilung 501 with the tactical number 142 by the 26th of November 1942. It was the first Tiger setting its tracks into Africa. Okay, now let's start actually doing the chassis. Starting the rear wall by filling some holes. These are always universal parts for later releases. 142 had no starter crank on the lower rear, for example. Some spare tracks were stored there. But while the putty is settling, the first sub-assembly is on the bench. I can't even tell you how much I dislike building up these checks from more than three parts. There's no reason for it. At least this one fits together well. The instructions are very inconclusive on where to place some of the parts holding it in place. Looking up the vehicle, I place the support brackets inside the clamps, used some common sense here, and the handle of the check gets clamped to the rear wall, so placing it last seemed to be a good idea to me as well. Next thing to watch out for are the flappers of the exhaust. RFM instructs you to display them closed using a single part. That's something used for parking and underwater driving. There's a variant with open flappers included. I opted out for them. Still I have to look up how the top end of this exhaust exactly looked on the real vehicle. Maybe I have to alter the indents to something else till the next episode. Yeah, don't know. Despite mounting them now for the video, they are removable. I want to paint them separately. To close down the rear section, for now at least, I would like to talk briefly about the heat shield. There's a photo edge variant included within the upgrade solution, as well as another style injection molded in the kit. I had my share of learning the photo edge department for this build, and this is a very complex 3D geometry here. I'll keep it on the side for now. Maybe you see it being mounted next episode. For now, the injection molded one is more than sufficient. Moving on with the chassis, I did speed through the first steps here. There is really not much to show. The suspension can be made workable if you choose to. Detailing overall very crisp. Only thing I am missing is the possibility to make the idler movable, just to nail the sack of the tracks later on. When it comes to road wheels, there are many on a Tiger. I do opt to sandwich them together the same way I've done on other vehicles before, using sculpting putty, in this case milliput, together with CA glue. Every road wheel gets a drop of CA glue, putty on top of that drop and another drop CA glue on top of the putty. While the putty is still settling and is ductile, the wheels need to be lined up perfectly. We need to be able to run guide horns through there. So take your time to do this step properly. That's the only advice I could give here. From here on, there will be no fresh build without 3D printing, period. Fixing stuff ourselves will be the standard in the new future. I hope so. This vehicle is no difference. RFM supplies us with early type road wheels. They need to be replaced with an initial style featuring one solid outer rim as well as a different writing on the tire itself. There is no gap between tire and rim. It's a detail not everybody will look at, of course. I know. But if you would like to have the STL files to print them yourself together with many other files, check out my Patreon, might be worth it. Let's have a look at the tracks RFM is supplying here. We get single link workable tracks injection molded and they look very nice indeed. Beautiful single link tracks. We have to clean four sprue gates per track link. We have to use track pins and single guide horns. The pins do come in packs of four. However, the guide horns don't line up and have to be placed one by one. That's at least my conclusion from measuring them inside the sprue. 
with 96 track links per side plus spares, 5 parts per link, 8 sprue gates to clean, 1000 parts, 1600 sprue gates. To be honest, they look good, but you can't ask me to spend that amount of time while me having a better solution that is much faster at hand. And in total it took much less time to actually design a replacement. But this is not only my design. On the right side are mine, I think. On the left here, these are done by Adam Mann, 3D scale. He has an, his own channel. You can't get around him when you're interested in tiger tanks. So I asked him, he's the guy I talk to when I fi don't find an answer in a book. And he did send me his design over. He is selling the STLs as far as I know. I will link this down below. My track links will be available much later on Patreon in a month or two. Adam does own an original track link and he designs his stuff one to one scale and then brings it down to 135th. And I do quite opposite. I simplify my designs a little bit in order to directly match them in 135th scale or design them as a part for 135th scale. This means his tracks follow the better geometry, the shapes are more realistic and overall making them the better choice. What you see me uh, doing in the background is cleaning off the parts and this was a job of 15 minutes per track side and only a handful were actually in need of we are manual cleaning up the rest just twists off the support structures once you know your settings and your resin this is really straightforward and fast and still a few links will break during the clean up phase this is just normal and it's from here it's not like these are costing any more money to aid the assembly process speed it up more i designed a rig helping to First get the wires to size. I use 0.3 millimeter copper wire. That's a motor core wire. The rig is aiding both the Gelendeketten, the combat tracks and the transport tracks on the other side, as well as, of course, assembling the tracks. I'm filming the assembly of Adamant's tracks here in good detail, just because I want to give you guys some hands-on experience with these resin printed tracks. It's in the case that these white metal ones always need to be shipped from somewhere else. You can't buy them in the stores usually where you buy the kits and they are such a cost factor. That's why I really push hard to replace all of my tracks with resin printed ones on my future builds. You see the resolution is quite high and they go together in no time. For me, it took actually less time to design my mock-up of my early Tiger tracks together with the rig, assemble, print and reassemble Adamant's tracks here. Took less time than dealing with the injection molded ones and in this case the resin printed ones have even better detail. Getting them out of the printer took about two times, close to three hours, assembling then them two hours in total so that's actually really something that has future in my opinion at least. Fit and sag is almost perfect as you will see in the later clips here. Be careful when selecting the right drive sprocket. My vehicle needs one with a large dome and the bolt pattern not being aligned to the arms. This part was found on the A sprue. The manual was incorrect here so check your reference. Let me pick up some speed from here on for the next steps. It's overall a good time to put a chassis together now all at once, making sure everything aligns properly and yeah, we don't get large gaps or fall out of alignment altogether. From here on, I would like to start sweeping across the deck, starting at the front, showing only the more important parts of the build or the information that would be missed otherwise. For these initial type of fenders, we do have three choices here in this kit. The first one is the one that aligns best with what I can see in the book on a tank that's only two chassis numbers apart from mine. The headlights were moved from the deck down on through the front glaciers on a Abteilung, on a battalion level. This part is from the upgrade solution made from photo edge completely. To the front plate, I choose the 3D printed part again for its unique look, the wing nuts hanging down left and right of the back. That is accurate. 
they can stay and don't need to be replaced with photo edge in this case. And that's already how the front looks being completed. No shovel, no tools, no spare tracks. These are often per individual vehicle choices, even changing over time in many cases. So off to the main deck. After most of the plastic parts were mounted, I quickly folded up some workable tool clamps for the X handle here in this case. They go together very easy and it's a nice addition, making it possible to play around with the model kit about before it all gets clocked up again <laughs> with the paint. No, seriously, this is the first time I took the challenge of doing some of these clamps with mixed feelings up front and mixed feelings now in the end. Cutting them out, establishing basic shape and that's all not a huge deal at all. But after that it gets a bit iffy and very very hard to film, catching the lid between the first two holes of the handle, readjusting the shape, catching the base in the other two holes. This needs a lot of practice and it's not easy at all. I felt I was nearly there, but not quite the full way, skill-wise speaking. That's why I will give no tutorial today, but yeah, it gets a standard, standard path from here on. Routine and practice will build up. These, these clamps are very delicate and fall apart very easy. Here on the wire cutters, for example, this clamp broke, I think, about five or six times. I took three different clamps and in the end I just have had to give up and fall back to the injection molded option the kit provides for every tool that is included. And yes, I know they can be 3D printed as well, but I had no success so far, but I'm working towards it. The injection molded version doesn't look too bad, not at all, I think. That was uh, one option on the, uh, on the wire cutters I had to opt out here. And on the shovel, I didn't get the cover or <laughs> the sleeve quite fitted with photo edge. It's an improvement after all, but not perfect yet. The overall arrangement of these tools together with the towing cable is one of the main features to identify a Tiger tank. This is the first time we do see Tigers being fully equipped before deployment. On these very initial Tigers, for example, the tow cable is supposed to be only 22 millimeters in diameter. I did manage to lose the cable supplied with this kit, therefore I fell back to the sting supplied with the first release. It's about 0.9 millimeter as far as I can see, and that's too large. I did order replacement wires from 0.6 millimeter up to 1 millimeter to solve these issues now for the future. About 0.6 millimeters to 0.7 millimeters in diameter would be a better choice for this vehicle. And you will see it mounted one when we come to painting the whole thing. It is very important to show the difference to a large diameter cable. However, RFM is now supplying the right size of towing cable ends. <laughs> we find a set on the W sprue as well as we get a 3D printed set within the upgraded solution. That's quite nice to date back the original release or the initial release too. With all the parts mounted, now these initial features are easy to spot. Smaller size tow cable ends, them being mounted in the rear, no S-mine launcher system yet, two headlights originally placed on the front of the deck, they are very exposed up there, they are very dim compared to modern car lighting and they are high above ground. All good reasons to move them further down to the front glaciers in this example. The arrangement and numbers of hand tools will change from here on when we progress further in the timeline of this vehicle. A last detail I would like to add in the front is the wire conduit. RFM hides one in its e-sprue and it's quite easy to make it fit. On the first side I had to cut out a half a millimeter due to me slightly misplacing the headlight obviously. On the other side it was a direct fit. It's not mentioned in the manual but I think it adds a little bit more detail and realism to the whole thing. Last detail in the rear. The Abteilung 501 stored some spare tracks loosely at the bottom of the rear wall. The brackets holding them in place are included in the kit. I opted out for the photo edge ones of the upgrade solution. Yes, that track link is actually bent, <laughs> but I have plenty of straight ones too. I need to sort them out. One thing about the early Fievel filters. 
I have not talked about them yet because they were just a yeah, few parts going together without event. The material on a W sprue is a little bit different somewhat um, from the rest and I have to fill and sand a few holes here clipping off the sprue gates left there. I feel like a total beginner looking at this <laughs> while editing. Okay. Another thing I would like to talk about here is the mud flap or are the mud flaps. Mine do not have side extensions and I used the plastic ones out of the W sprue, not the photo edge ones. You have to check your reference for this. This might vary per vehicle. I link this down below in the information box. The side fenders are made from individual sections in this release. I choose the kit version because I do like them even better than the photo edge ones from the upgrade solution. Two long sections, two short ones, angled up. Nice to see RFM did change this after getting some flag by Adam. For me it's now time to wrap up the construction phase. Turret placed on hull, done. <laughs> Not quite yet. I would like to install a safety layer from here on. This works by taking pictures from all sides, letting them sit for a day or two and then coming back to them with a fresh view. Making out all the spots I've missed or neglected during the construction phase and there is quite a lot you can spot on a macro shot. I would like to fix them now, making sure not to compromise the final result by a missed out sprue gate for example. We will see us in two weeks from here either finishing this one here or in case I don't get my tow cables in time I will finish something else instead. Happy modeling all together. If you have enjoyed the video don't forget to subscribe. See you guys.